Okay, what I got here is a 2004 GMC Sierra. Now this is kind of the same for the Chevy trucks and um, throughout the years, a lot of them you could do this. They have an ABS brake controller. This one happens to be underneath the seat there under, by the frame. The newer ones were out here, or the older trucks were out there under the hood. So, a lot of times if you've worked on one or something and you get some air stuck in there, it'll get into the controller. And it's very hard to get out of there unless you can auto bleed the system. And when the auto bleed, I'm going to use a snap on Solus scan tool. That's what I'm going to use to do this. Now, this is no substitute for bleeding your brakes. You still got to have your brakes bled out properly. This is just to regain pedal height and pedal fill that may be caused by any kind of air stuck in the ABS controller and stop any effects from that. One other thing real quick, I use a bleeder, a brake bleeder like this, where you stick this over the bleeder on the wheel cylinder, caliper, whatever, and you pump this up and bring a vacuum, it sucks fluid through. It's kind of like gravity bleeding, only um, it kind of speeds the process up. And I bleed most of my brakes by myself, and I can usually get it with that. Now, the other thing is, some people like to pump the brakes. Well, the problem with pumping is if you have an airline or a brake line there with, with an air pocket in the middle of it, and you keep trying to push fluid into it, if you have one pump and open the bleeder, all you're doing is moving fluid. If you sit there and try to pump the brakes up and get a pedal, you just keep pushing fluid into the air pocket, it breaks the air pocket into multiple air pockets, and eventually it leads to sudsing. And once you get it suds, you either got to be able to suck all this, you know, flush the whole system and start over or let it set. So, I always say if you're going to bleed them by manually pumping the brakes, always just hit the brake pedal slowly, open the bleeder, let it go down and keep doing that. Like I say, you're trying to move fluid, you're not trying to build a pressure. Okay, now this is a Snap-on Solus Ultra, so other computers may work a little different, but I'm not sure if you can see the screen. But I'm going to go down here to Automated Bleed. And it tells you that it's um, referred to service instructions to give you instructions. Now, battery must be fully charged. Um, check fluid levels, set parking brake, transmission park, neutral and zero. So what they're wanting you to do is have the emergency brake on. Um, they want you to have everything just like it's ready to get down the road, only have it in park with no miles an hour. Now it says to hold or apply and hold brake pedal to activate the test. Now what you're going to do is you're going to hold the brake pedal down but you're not going to try to manipulate it. You're going to let it do what it wants to. What this thing's going to do is activate the solenoids in the ABS unit. So your brake pedal is going to go up and down to the floor. It's going to vibrate. It's going to do all kinds of stuff. But you just want to keep enough pressure on it to let it do its thing. Okay. So now let's go ahead and I don't know if you'll be able to hear this thing do this or not. You'll hear the anti-lock brake solenoids cycling. So let's hit um, go, but now you got to keep your foot on this until it's done. There's, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. Okay, now the test is complete. So you let off the brake pedal. Now, what that should have done, if you had any air in there or any issues in there, should have gave you a better feel of the brake pedal. Sometimes you'll have to do that a couple times to get all the air out. Um, now, keep in mind, if there was air in there, it went somewhere. So I usually bleed the brakes pretty good still after this. I usually put that vacuum thing on there and, and suck the brakes out. 
the brake fluid through and make sure I have no more air. And like I say, this automated test should be done only after you've made sure that the rear brake adjustments are correct, the front calipers are working properly and the slides are good on them. Um, you make sure you have no brake leaks and you've tried to bleed the system out. So, um, if all that doesn't work, then I do the automated bleed. Now, I know in the older Chevys, there was a connector up here that you could disconnect to go to the wheel sensor for the speed sensor on a front wheel. You could disconnect any of them. It would make the anti-lock brake go into a fail safe. So it would be like it turns itself off, sort of. And a lot of times you'll have a better braking feel and it'll seem to work better. And that's one way to know if, if, if it feels good without the ABS on that way, then there's probably something in your ABS going wrong. So that's just a way to test. The other thing, keep in mind too, it doesn't hurt to flush your brake fluids every so often because even though it seems to be in a sealed environment, um, the different heats and different things with the metal and everything around the brake components, it will draw moisture. The newer brake fluids is not nearly as bad as older times when they had really water problems with brakes, but you'll still draw it. So if a person was to um, bleed their brakes out and flush the fluid once a year, they'd probably have a lot less problems. And the little rubber caps on the bleeders, leave them on. If you don't have them on there, you can always um, use vacuum caps or something like that because that will really help the next time you want to take them bleeders off. Alright, so hopefully any of the information I gave in the video maybe will help Mr. Robinson. So, um, have a good one.